Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. Um, Ava and Lalo and I have come up to Montesano State Park for the week. And my youngest son, Lyle, has come up to help us set up and to eat a little supper with us. Lyle, thank you for coming up. Thank you for inviting me. I look forward to the steak and the potatoes. It's gonna be delicious. Now in this video, I wanna talk with you about restored camp axes. I wanna tell you why I started restoring them, how I typically use them, how I restore them, and then I wanna show you some that I have available for sale. If you like to camp and want a campfire, you'll have to have a camp ax to split your firewood. Now, if you just want an occasional campfire, you could split a little wood with a small hatchet. But if you want to make several fires, you will need to split a lot of wood and will need a larger hatchet or boy's axe. Unfortunately, it's hard to find good camp axes. Most of the axes found in local hardware and department stores are cheap axes that don't have a sheath are uncomfortable to use, have steel that is hard to keep sharp, and have heads that can come loose and possibly hurt someone. The best camp axes are only sold in a few specialty stores or online, and they are expensive. And so several years ago, I started restoring old camp axes because I can make a good one for about half the price of a well-known axe. So let me explain how we use our camp axe. To start a campfire, we'll have to split a large piece of wood down into smaller pieces of stove wood and kindling. And since we make a lot of fires, we have to split a lot of wood. Typically, we buy bundles of USDA-certified, heat-treated, pest-free firewood from local grocery stores or home improvement stores. Each piece is about 15 inches long and about 3 to 5 inches in diameter. Most of the pieces are oak or hickory with straight grain, and they're easy to split, but a few pieces have a twisted grain like the one on the right and so we set these pieces aside to throw onto the fire after it's good and hot. Typically I'll begin with a large piece of firewood like this and split it down until I get about 15 to 20 pieces that are about one to one and a half inches in diameter. You can watch my axe safety videos to see some of the techniques that I use. Then I cut each of these small pieces in half and pack them in a duffel bag. So I have dry firewood available anytime I want to cook a meal on my woody folding camp stove. Occasionally I use my camp axe to make other things such as tent pegs, splitting wedges, batons for driving in tent stakes, and hiking staffs. So let me tell you how I restore these vintage camp axes. I look for old axe heads made by Craftsman, Collins, Plum, Hultzbrook, and other reputable axe makers that appear to be in good condition. Now it's still possible to find good quality axe heads in antique stores and flea markets for around $20, but frequently now they are priced around $30 to $40. And if I buy the axe head on eBay, I'll have to pay an extra $10 for shipping. Frequently, these heads are rusty, but I know that heads made by good axe makers will have good steel, and the rust will be easy to remove. Some of these axes have a handle, but I know that the handle is usually rotten or cracked, and so I usually remove the handle. Occasionally, I'll try to save an original handle, but it takes a lot of time and effort to do so. Once I have a head, I begin looking for a handle to fit it. I have a few axe handles at home ready to hang, but usually I'll have to order an axe handle from one of several internet suppliers 
the cost of the handle will run between $10 and $25, depending on its length, its grain orientation, and its overall quality. After hanging the handle, I'll make a leather sheath for the axe. Now, this leather sheath is not fancy, but it is very functional with a welt. Most of the axes that I'm offering for sale have this old designed sheath, but recently restored axes will have this new sheath design. The leather and hardware used to make this sheath only cost about $10, but it takes about three hours to make one. After acquiring the head and the handle, I soak the head in white vinegar for two days and then clean the head. I drill a lanyard hole in the handle, fit the handle to the head, insert the wedges, sand the handle, and apply two coats of boiled linseed oil, make a leather sheath, and then sharpen it. All total, it takes six to eight hours to restore an axe. And so I add about $25 to the cost of an axe to cover my time. In addition to the sheath, I can add some extra accessories such as a overstrike collar and a lanyard for an extra fee. Shipping fees will depend upon the total weight of the axe, the length of the handle, and the distance from Huntsville, Alabama. Recently, I shipped this large hatchet to South Carolina for $15. But postal rates are subject to change at any time. So now let me show you some of the axes that I currently have for sale. Large boys axes typically have a two to three pound head and a 28 inch handle. Now this size is a little large for me, but it's very popular among Canadian bushcraft enthusiasts. Currently I have three of these axes available. From top to bottom they are a well-used king cutter that still has a lot of life, a new council tool two-pound boys axe that has a new sheath, a sanded handle, and a lanyard hole, and a very nice Holtz Brook. Keen Cutter is priced at $55 plus shipping, the Council Tool is $65 plus shipping, and the Holtz Brook is over $100 plus shipping. A small boy's axe has about a one and a half to two and a quarter pound head and a 24 inch handle. This is my favorite axe size and currently I have three available, all priced over $100 plus shipping. The top two heads were made by Collins and the bottom is made, was made by Holtz Brook. Recently I bought this two pound two ounce craftsman head for $30 and I plan to hang it on a 24 inch beaver tooth handle. A large hatchet has a one and a half to two pound head on a 19 inch handle. This size is very popular among bushcraft enthusiasts and currently I have two available, both priced about $100 plus shipping. The top one in this photo was made by Collins and the bottom one was made by S.A. Wetterlings. A small hatchet or scout axe is perhaps the most popular choice for most family tent camping families because it is easy to control and it easily packs into a small tool bag. And currently I have six of them available. The two at the top are early Sears and Roebuck brands. The two in the middle are Craftsman axes and the two at the bottom are Plum axes. Each one is currently priced about $65 plus shipping. If you're interested in any of these axes or other axes that I have available, just shoot me an email at fmd4camper at gmail.com. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this little video and I hope that you've learned a little bit about my restored camp axes. Be sure and let me know if you'd like to get one of the ones that I have available. And again, I want to say thanks to my son, Lyle, for coming up and visiting with us today.
Uh, well, Ready? you're welcome, Dad, and you're welcome for driving in your tent stakes with the uh, with the axes. So my uh, forearm got a good workout. Thanks. For more information about camp axes and other camping equipment, please subscribe to this channel, visit my website, and watch this next video that is featured below. Thanks for watching.